Manish Nair is asking, you know, have you tried uh, because he is fond of uh, vertical hydroponics towers? So, mm. have you tried uh, vertical hydroponic towers in your farm? Yeah, uh, Guru, you've seen it, right? Uh, mm. We yeah. had two couple of stands. Uh, we had so that was another thing we did. We te wanted to test the concept of vertical hydroponics, and uh, uh, only for two stands. Uh, I I don't know, I don't know how you would be able to understand because the images are different. Uh, but we did it. Mm. We did it. Try. We did try to do it. Um, I did not get good yield out of it um, mm. in those places for various reasons. It could be because of uh, uh, we tried a bit of with lights as well, uh, but no, I did not find it very um, easy. So. Yeah, but he is talking more about you know the those towers you know which are in uh, you know, uh, oh those one no 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 yeah. those I haven't tried. I, yeah. I have tried uh, uh, you know vertical hydroforming in a different method, but not like that. No, uh, yes, uh, we know that's tried. Yeah, I got layer. that. Yeah, one layer and second layer, third layer, and I think light was an issue there. So yep. even with light, he tried artificial light, but uh, not much successful. But uh, may, maybe because of other reasons also. He it could be for various reasons. And see, end of the day, you'll have to look at the practicality of mm. it. Like uh, uh, if you increase lights, you also have to expect that it will also cost you from Absolutely. an electric, electricity standpoint. True, true. And uh, there are pros and cons in both. And do you have any tech integrated in your technology integrated in your farm, you know, automation or something? So, well, yeah, we did. Uh, we did work with automation. We did work with um, all those ways. So predominantly, we worked on ensuring the motors switch on, switch off automatically. Uh, foggers were kept automatically, where it would um, like put a like a three seconds it will release mm. water and stop and it will do that consistently on its own so yes a part uh, a part of it we were able to automate we were able to do things uh, some you will have to you know eventually uh, go to mm. manual itself okay. it's not a good option to always keep automatic because uh, you know the ground reality better you know the weather conditions better uh, it's not very practical always to think of automation but um, where you can do automation, do it, but sensibly also avoid it because it's not very useful all the time. True, true. And maybe it depends on the scale also, you know, uh, yeah. it may not make sense. You know, with, uh, For a scale like a... ours, I would say even uh, 12,000 square feet is very small, guys. Get, yeah. uh, you know, in commercial terms, I'm saying it's a very, right. very small thing. It's not, it's not anything good. Uh, okay. But again, uh, that's a risk that we took because we wanted to understand things in a better way. So totally. that's the totally. reason. Yeah. And Bharat is asking, you know, what were the factors involved in deciding the scale of the project? Yeah, so, we, still... uh, so we started small only. We also did some small house researches and all. Uh, but then again, uh, we, we always knew that we will do it. So back of the brain, I knew I'm going to do it. So there was no point in I worrying about it every day. So I knew I can do it because I had some understanding of these things better. So we started, we played around, but I also had informed uh, the people related to the stakeholders, like you say, that there will be problems. We will have problems for a good year or so. We'll have to be practical about it and, uh, you know, understand the challenges. So they were also fine with it. And that's why it works. Uh, it's only because if you have the right team around you who's, who right. also understands your way of functioning, mm -hmm. uh, it'll work. Uh, for faster results, it's not the best place to do because plants don't grow faster than whatever you play around. Absolutely. <laughs> So next question is Vivek. I know he's asking what was the initial investment. It depends again what you want to do. So for example, if if I am see it, it all starts with basic how big your farm wants to be, hmm. and uh, you know what materials you want to put inside that, and uh, uh, do you want automation or not? Do you want uh, you know uh, growing methods to be certain ways? For example, cocoa peat is one method, clay is another method. There are different growing modes as well. So it all depends on how. If you ask me personally, what was my investment? It's around uh, fifty-five something like that. Okay, fifty-five lakhs. Yeah, <clears throat> and um, yeah, Bharat is asking, have you explored uh, e-mandis? 
yes we did we did quite a try we did try to spend a lot of time on that but we didn't feel very easy with it there were thousand other uh, issues that was popping up with emundies and all uh, mm. we felt physical um, in i mean physically giving and giving it to people or uh, physically reaching out to people was much more easier than the emundy concept that was there so uh, at least for me i didn't feel it was very uh, uh good but again uh, things could improve down the line yeah. as well nice there is option though um do we have enough market and how did you price the products yeah maybe that's an interesting question and rates um, please i mean lay, rates that uh, worked for you which worked for you something now how do you decide the price yeah so uh, see it all depends on uh, if you have too much of choices then it makes life easier but no there are not too many choices here uh, mm. you always have to get it uh, very correctly is this part there are people who grow the same um, items or varieties in soil and there are people like us who grow it in hydroponics for a person like a big basket or amazon um, they are they don't care literally from where you get it they want quality produce that reason is because people don't know that there is a concept of hydroponics first of all they don't know how uh, valuable it is to buy it from hydroponics or soil so if somebody knows about it let's say you can get a good produce organic produce with less metals or no metals literally or it will be minimalistic metals in it Uh, then hydroponics or organic way is the best way if somebody yeah. gives importance to it then only the buyers will take it seriously if the end customer is saying i want organic items then they'll worry about it if end customer says i want lettuce and that's it and this is the normal price i'm going to pay you that is end customer telling it to amazon amazon will say to farmers okay what all you have let me know and i say these are my producers he look at another person who also who is a farmer from soil based he'll say what is your price he will say 30 rupees i will say 90 rupees in in all logical way he'll say 30 rupees guy makes more sense with good quality only thing is yours is organic right but nobody is pressing me for an organic one so you know what i'll go with that guy itself now that is the problem what we are facing Mm. this is throughout the industry i'm saying right. and this happens in all the places very few let me put it like this is a niche market like a very less percentage of market is really really worried about getting organic 99 95% of people genuinely don't know about this and they don't care who's going to give them a better price they're going to buy it from them yes. so pricing is the most difficult part of uh, hydroponics meaning you will sometimes literally cry that cost of producing this uh, per kg of lettuce is more than what the cost they are asking me to sell it to <laughs> so i would have spent 60 rupees or 70 rupees to produce which ideally is not a good number but your situation is so bad that you know you can't do anything it will take so much so if 70 rupees and the person who's asking you to sell it at 45 rupees that's a loss so um, it's very difficult to tell how to do this pricing because it depends on what scale you grow the bigger you grow right. the lesser the expense you will have the smaller you have the more the expense because you have to keep two people no matter what in the farm and those two people will cost you somewhere around 25 to 26 30000 depending on how mm-hmm. you price it so you will expect 25 30000 going there now if your farm is only 500 square feet what are you going to do you have to understand that part you have spent so much on electricity you have spent so much on all these things mm-hmm. you have to consider everything and see it would be difficult correct so the bigger the farm the lesser the expense the better that you can manage it but the bigger the farm also means you will have to put a large capex for it yep yep definitely and bigger problems yeah <laughs> So yeah Siddesh is asking do you have any particular seed brands um palak coriander and other uh, only for hydroponic I, no nothing is only for hydroponics uh, it's all the same seed you can use for all the soil or soilless thing there is nothing specific but uh, i mean maybe you want to know which brands they use 
seed brand. Uh, I have been using, uh, let's take spinach for example. I've I've used Orbi seeds. There is uh, mm. uh, there is Indo American. There is FN Hybrid. I've used quite a lot. Uh, I've used uh, even Ashoka seeds uh, like mm. this. Uh, but the point is, see, uh, I find Indo American better. Mm. And second, I would say Orbi seats have done a good job. But again, it depends uh, how you are using, what methods you're using and what nutrients you're using also. Seats are good, but always go for the best one. And the best ones are uh, Indo-American and all these ones. It was very interesting conversation, Navina. Thank you so much for uh, giving so many you know, information. And uh... I can see a lot of changes in you, you know, since uh, I saw you uh, last yeah. year, one and a half years back, I don't remember, but now you're, you're sounding so matured and, you know, <laughs> hey, it, it, life throws you all yes, this yes, thing. Yes. And it's always learning, matured. you know, learning will never stop. So no. we wish you all the best and um, uh, Thank you. you do wonderful, uh, you know, many more bigger farms in future. Um, wish you all the best. So, even last question answer mark bada what is the best marketing strategy that worked for you ah uh, sir so um, best marketing strategy um i think we reached out a lot uh, we reached out to anybody and everybody who we could <laughs> think will buy it in fact i first remember initial stages i used to sell to guru also so anybody <laughs> that anybody that would want to buy i was reaching out to them and um, mm. you know saying them i have these producers uh, see i'll put it like this to you now initially i struggled so much now people are asking me left right, right. center uh, I won't lie at this part. There are a demand. There is uh, not back then. Back then, demand was not there at all. When we started, it was very difficult to even sell 20 kgs. Uh, my farm is capable of doing around 2.5 tons, something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, selling 20 kgs mm -hmm. also was difficult initially in a month, I'm saying. So uh, it's not very straightforward. Now there is a lot of demand. But the right. problem is there's a lot of people who started have closed down. It's a reality. A mm. lot of people have closed uh, hydrophonics and ran away because the cost is not at all matching. It was not. So mm. there are problems in this industry. It's not like it's not there. But mm. the fact is that uh, I, I, when I, I, I'll put it like this, two months back, three months back, demand was so bad. I used to waste around uh, half of my kgs, meaning uh, openly I'll tell you, I used to waste around 500 kgs every month. I had to throw because the people who promised that they'll buy did not buy. And because they found uh, from OT and all, they were getting at much cheaper prices. And mm. uh, they were like, why should I buy yours? I'm getting it for the 25 rupees, 30 rupees. Why do I need to buy it? Let's say 60 rupees, 70 rupees. Mm. I don't need it. And what will I do? I have no other choice but to give it to somebody. If nobody is buying it, I can't waste my time on only keeping there on the stand. I had to throw. And this happened for days, months, I mean, weeks together. And I got very frustrated and I said to my team, see, I think we are wasting too much. Next time, let's do one thing. But I'm 100% confident from March 15th or let's say April 1st, demand will be there. Because that time others will stop and that's when Correct. they will want us. Mm -hmm. This is basic calculation. So whether it is that that is the right thing to do. And I started that way. But who knew that water will dry up in my farm? <laughs> even though I had taken all the steps, even though I had taken everything in the right way, I had made my labors available uh, because that is a bigger challenge. Labor managing is oh. very big. I somehow managed it and I kept everybody alive and like Nilla, March, April, first in the Namdu, super agribeko. And we did everything. We planted everything. Everything was perfect. Comes borewell no dry. 15, like 10 days before uh, we had to harvest, borewell goes dry. And in the 10 days, uh, water was so difficult to get tankers also because Bangalore itself is struggling for tankers. Mm. So we couldn't get tankers and we couldn't do anything. Spoiled. So... so no matter how much planning you do, you can't help these things. It will right. hit you back. Expect the unexpected, Alva. Expect the unexpected <laughs> and uh, be ready. So, Ivat Tumba demanded in India. Like mm. more than 15, 20 players want my produce because they I have know. seen my produce. True. But I can't give. I can't give anybody because I don't have. Uh, 
right. harvest it's not till yet to harvest it's going to get harvested next month or um, right. something like right. that so i have to be quiet and you know keep telling them i'm sorry so then you if you keep saying sorry sorry they'll say okay you know what i'll go find somebody else <laughs> so that's how you lose people also <laughs> ವೆರಿ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಒಂದ್ ದಿನ ಮ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಕೋಲ್ಡ್ ಸ್ಟೋರೇಜ್ ಆಟ ನಾವು ಮಾಡಕ್ಕಾಗೋದು ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಟು ಇಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆ ತರ ಕೋಲ್ಡ್ ಸ್ಟೋರೇಜ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ಮಾಡೋದು ಕಷ್ಟ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ಲೇಯರ್ಸ್ ಅದನ್ನ ಕೊಟ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಅವ್ರ ಅವ್ರ ದುಡ್ಡು ತಗೊಂತಾರೋದಕ್ಕಲ್ಲ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಯು ವುಡ್ ಹವ್ ನೆವರ್ ಕ್ಯಾಲ್ಕುಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಈಸಿ ಟು ಡೂ ದಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಮಾಡಕಾಗಲ್ಲ ಲೈವ್ ಸ್ಟೋರೇಜ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಯು ನೋ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ ಯು ನೋ ಏರ್ ಟೆಂಪರೇಚರ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ ಲೈವ್ ಸ್ಟೋರೇಜ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಐ ನೋ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಕನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೈಂಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ देयर ಯು ನೋ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಗ್ರೋ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಎಲ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಯು ನೋ ಎನಿವೇ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಅಗೇನ್ ಬೈ ಬೈ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸರ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ एवरीवन ಫಾರ್ ಜಾಯ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಇ